Look at him. He's running away like the dog that he is, because he's Caladog, you get it? Ah. Uh, hello and welcome back to our Sturgeon Viking. And we're going to be forming a caravan in this town right away. Actually, I, I can't do that because I don't have a companion. Okay, good start. Good start to the episode. Fantastic. Okay, I'm going to need to find a companion. Hopefully there's going to be one in the tavern after this, but there was actually, a well, two reasons why I wanted to go in here and speak to this guy. He actually has a task, and I'm hopeful that he might actually be the person that can help me to recruit noble units and uh, we'll we'll see how it goes but uh, yes i'll escort the caravan myself yes i have to escort a merchant caravan as you can see i'm actually a little bit injured as well so that might be a little bit problematic but anyway let's have a look here all right so who is the person with the noble units i actually can't tell i do need to get some companions unfortunately there aren't any in the tavern okay well that's going to be a bit of a bit of an issue isn't it i suppose let's escort the caravan as best as we can as you can see this is my current army i have a huge amount of sturgeon recruits and that is pretty much it so hopefully we're going to do reasonably well here but unfortunately my hp is not looking very good let's actually just take a quick look at my skills here as well i'm actually almost leveled up as you can see probably going to be concentrating a little bit more in trade skill that's also a reason why i wanted to get a caravan up and running because that can over time give us a pretty decent amount of cash and i won't need to rely too much on smithing as a result of that probably try to get a couple of workshops operational because that's also going to make a pretty big difference to our purse strings shall we say and uh, do bear in mind that just look at this my wages right now are basically nothing so if I can get a workshop and a caravan up and running at the same time I shouldn't have to worry about wages in a very very long time indeed do bear in mind however that we are also only clan tier 2 which basically makes no difference whatsoever at the moment because obviously we're not maxed out in terms of army size or anything like that but you know it's always good to keep an eye on that just in case we could potentially recruit some more people as well but i think i'm actually just going to head into epicrotia right here and i'm literally just going to go and see if they have any companions and indeed they do so this is great so i'm actually just gonna skip the pleasantries and we are going to have you join me i don't really care what kind of stats they have at this point I literally just need some bodies so that they can become caravans. Oh, this person also has a merchant caravan escort mission. Well, thankfully, we don't need to really worry about that because we're already on one, of course, but... I am going to ask her if we can form a caravan. There we go. Is there a way to form a caravan that includes better troops? Yes, I'm perfectly happy to pay the additional cost. And we will let Laska Longknife lead this one. And uh, next town that we pass by, I will hopefully be able to uh, form another one. I could potentially get a workshop up and running in Epicrotia too, which might actually make sense. Epicrotia is one of, well, the best places for a smithy. Uh, Maranath is also another one. All right, hello there. I'd like to buy this workshop. It is literally only 14,000, so that should be absolutely fine. There we go. Okay, I was a bit worried there for a second because I don't know whether you've noticed, but escort caravan missions are a little bit weird. Sometimes they're going to literally only go to one other town and you're going to be like, oh, okay, well, that was pretty short. And sometimes they'll go to four and you'll be like, oh, okay, I am now an old man and I can't go anywhere. And uh, yeah, that's the kind of thing that actually happens. That has happened in a previous series as well, where we've literally escorted a caravan all the way from Vlandian territory into Azerai and uh, back again. I have been attempting to do that. I've been fighting a bunch of looters and uh, forest bandits and things like that, but obviously they don't give a huge amount of experience at the moment. Okay, so there you go. That is indeed that. And we have completed... The quest. Unfortunately, it just gave me 700 gold. I was actually hoping for maybe a little bit more than that. But the main reason why I wanted to do that was for relation gain. Relation gain is still going to be something that we are going to try and focus on as much as we possibly can. And Iceni has actually leveled up, which is great. More into trade skill and more into social skills as well. I'm probably not going to be doing too much charm in this particular series because I have done a lot of persuasion in the past. And even though I absolutely love the uh, strategy r surrounding that particular gameplay element it might not be something that i'll use in this one primarily because it is just so strong and it is one of those things where if you are able to persuade a number of people to join you then you pretty much turn your faction into an unstoppable killing machine which obviously is not the case in in regards to smithing because smithing 
that basically just eliminates a tedious portion of the early game where you're running around trying to find as much money as you possibly can. While smithing is very powerful at the moment, I wouldn't say that it is going to make my faction any stronger or weaker by me utilizing it in comparison to charm where it can literally turn as i've said before your faction into something so strong that no one can stop it the only time that i might persuade is if i am in a do or die situation where someone is literally bearing down on us and in an effort to try and save our lives then we'll probably try to persuade but that is the only time that we'll try to do that otherwise what i'm also going to do here is i would like to speak to oh caravan ambush i think that's a new quest i'm actually going to try and form another caravan van here as well there we go zem the lucky hopefully he's going to be lucky for us i'm a little bit worried about this to be honest because my units are really not very good it might very well be the party i need to kill quickly go i, I think thanks to the overhaul mod we actually do get a little bit of an increase in the amount of shields that they use because let's face it beforehand they would just get absolutely murdered by a variety of ranged and that would be well not very useful so Yes, unfortunately, bushwhackers, as you can no doubt tell, are actually giving us a bit of a problem here. So let's see if I can uh, get closer to them. My, my, my athletics is still awful. Don't shoot me. Ah, uh, get him. There we go. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, perfect. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, great. Okay, so that has literally just caused a huge amount of morale damage to them. And now we have increased our relation and we've won the battle. Yes, yes, indeed. Indeed, that was actually the entire quest. Uh, thankfully, we do have another bandit party over here. I will auto-resolve against them. Don't really mind if we lose uh, units here and there because, as I've said, very early on in the game so far and uh, losing some units is really not very important at the moment. Generally, if you're running around with a whole bunch of recruits and things, it really is not going to do anything to uh, worry about them too much okay so let's see uh I, th I, I don't really think any of these things are going to be that good for me uh so i'm actually just going to sell all of it i did say i'm not going to be doing any more smithing which is absolutely fine i mean maybe if there is indeed a, a time when i do need some cash then i might do it but as I've said before, it is literally just a case of getting all of the tedium out of the way because, let's face it, Sturgia needs all the help it can get. The reason why I'm doing this is so that we can potentially trade some of these goods. I'm not entirely sure if they're going to give me a good price for any of this stuff. I know that in, um, in the places where you can build a smithy, so Marinath, for example, they might very well buy your iron bars and stuff like that for a pretty decent amount so i'm hopeful that maybe we'll be able to do something like that so if i go over here and let me see if i can speak to him now the carpenter is now liking us a huge amount by the way okay so yes let's see if there's actually a smithy up and running oh there already is fantastic that's great hopefully we'll be able to do this as well there we go that is fine okay great so I'm going to punch the air for no apparent reason. Or I'm going to be very excited about purchasing the smithy. <laughs> I can sell all of this at Dunglanis for a lot more than I can sell it for here, which is actually quite amazing. Okay, so wool is pretty good to sell here. Yeah, I think I will indeed be going over to Dunglanis. It seems like it has a much better, much better turnover ratio over there so that's what we're gonna do lex army is within reach as well we should probably go and speak to lex and see if he needs any assistance against the vlandians don't know whether you noticed but there was a relatively large vlandian army nearby and uh, that is a bit problematic you really want to make sure that you keep on top of those armies and try to do a little bit of damage here and there to them and we're going to just take all the loot there as well there we go nice okay so our reputation increasing thanks to us defeating bandits that's also something that i'm trying to focus on quite a bit because anytime we can do that that is going to result in some really nice gains so let's see if i can sell all of this sell all of this here okay yeah the prices are going down dramatically as you can quite clearly tell so we're just going to do that unfortunately i don't seem to be able to get trade skill from this as i've said before i have had some pretty extensive experience being a trader in bannerlord there's even a playlist down below in the description if you want to check that out because 
That was uh, probably one of my favorite series so far. Someone actually did mention in the comments, the Vikings were very proficient traders. So I decided, hey, okay, fine. Let's uh, let's let's uh, chuck a little bit of trade skill in there. And so I'm going to try to focus a little bit on trading. Okay, look at this. We now have 25 in medicine. So this is going to be very nice. Increases healing character by 10%. Healing, healing rate of the character by 10%, that is. And I think that's actually what we're going to take because personally, I don't think 10 hit points is worth it. The best place that we can go are a bunch of iron ore villages. Iron ore villages are perfect for our purposes. So I'm actually literally just going to be buying a huge amount of horses here. Ah, look at this. Our caravan is being attacked by three bandits. Yes, the yeah, three bandits is not really going to be that much of a threat to us. And oh dear. OK, apparently the game has now thought that three bandits was just not enough. So it is indeed crashed. Ah, now this time, apparently the caravan did not get attacked by that particular band of bandits. That actually shows a little bit of the randomization of the game, which I very much appreciate, because let's face it, if it's the same every single time, then, well, it's going to get a little bit boring, isn't it? But thankfully, that is not the case here. So anyway, we're going to continue moving onward here. I have been fighting a couple of bandit parties along the way as well, because, well, we need to. And uh, getting some a little bit of extra pieces of loot here and there is always a good thing. That is really cool, though. I got to say, I actually really like that feature because it means that you know exactly where your units are going to be and uh, where they where they've been defeated or where they're being attacked or whatever the case may be. And it really does make a big difference. So we're just going to kill these guys real quick. So you may be wondering, why am I now in Makeb, in Kuzait territory? Well, I decided, hey, you know what? If we're going to be doing a little bit of trading, then I'm going to return to one of my old favorite trade routes. And that basically means going to the two villages that I know of in the area that provide iron ore. I'm going to be also joining this tournament, as I said, and hopefully we'll be able to do quite well here. Unfortunately, the Kuzait are using weapons that are, um, well, let's just say not exactly my forte. So. Hopefully we'll do all right. Oh, nice. That was a, that was actually a good hit. That was actually not a not a bad hit right there. Oh, I'm actually quite quite what? I'm actually quite surprised. What's going on here? I, I think my team is actually really good, and that is uh, probably the reason why we're having such a decent time. Anyway, let's skip that round and go on to the next one. It's a free for all. It's a free for all. This is going to be kind of painful, I think. Yeah, as you can see, my horse is taking a little bit of damage, but nothing really too bad. Oh, got to be careful. Got to be careful. Nice. And now I was hoping to use that guy's speed against him, but unfortunately that was not the case. Good amount of damage there. It's a poking match. Who is going to have the longest stick? We don't know. So far it is me, so that's good. Oh, oof, that is painful. Got him in the head. <laughs> Got him in the head. All right. Nice. Okay, we took out the spear infantry. That's all I really wanted to do. And now we can just both concentrate. Oh, dear. He's dead. Right. We might have some issues. Do you have a... S uh, yeah, of course he doesn't. Of course he doesn't. Okay, let's, let me just get on the horse. Nice. Got him off his mount. That's what we wanted to do. And then eliminate him. Yes, fantastic. Okay, that was actually a Dark Khan. <laughs> and as we know, Dark Khans are very good at what they do. Mainly due to my riding skill being so incredibly low. Oh, nice. That was in the shoulder and did so much damage. Wow, crazy. Oh, we got him. Glancing blow at the end right there. Nice. And there you go. We gained some decent gold. Not too, not too much, but basically getting some charm skill, decent, getting some skill points, that's all right. I know I said I wasn't going to use charm skill, but getting some skill points in basically any skill that I can is going to be a win in my book. So now that we have done that, we can now move on, but we are going to get another trait here. Plus one renown for each issue resolved might actually make sense, but I think I'm going to take 20% more renown from battles because that is just so significant. So many different battles that we end up doing that it really makes all the difference in the end. 
All right, so we now have 25 in trade skill, and Batania has declared war on us. Okay, so that's going to be a bit of a problem. Now, anyway, I did go to this village over here just to catch you up about what I am doing with my trade route, and now we are on our way to Urzener, which is one of the other villages that provide iron ore. And as you can see, oh, the value. The value of this is crazy. Okay, so we now have about 135 iron ore, and I know a very hungry town indeed is Chai Kand. Okay, so 5% decreased trade penalty for equipment, or 5% decreased trade penalty for trade goods. Now, generally, if I am going to be a smithing kind of character, and I'm going to try and take as much advantage of smithing as possible, even though you don't really need this, to be honest, because smithing is so powerful as it is, you would probably take this. You'd probably take appraiser or something like that. Or if you just want to get a huge amount of loot from bandits and stuff like that, then yeah, you'd definitely take appraiser. However, because I'm going to be more of a trader kind of character, we're going to be taking wholesaler. That makes more sense to me, considering I'm on my way to sell some iron ore right now. All right, so as you can see, we can sell the iron ore for 57, which is pretty good. I, I think it is pretty good because, uh, well, we bought some iron ore for 50 per one, and we bought some other iron ore for 80 per one, and we bought some for 14 per one. So technically, this is a decent place to sell. So I'm going to just sell about 15 here, literally just for the trade skill points. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem to really be giving us that much of a profit. So I'm actually going to be heading over from Chai Kand to Cyrenea. Cyrenea is also a town that is relatively hungry for iron ore. At least it used to be. So it might very well be that the trade routes have indeed changed since that previous version that I played. But it really depends. I mean... Generally, any place where there is a smithy, that's going to be the place you want to go because they're always going to be hungry for iron ore. And also another good strategy, by the way, to have as a trading character, if you're just literally focusing on trading and not actually on combat or training up your units or anything like that, good strategy to have is selling food to previously besieged towns. Uh, it seems a little bit uh, like vulturing or whatever, but it's true. That is the best possible way to gain uh, gain profit. Anyway, as you can see right here, we do have a number of horses that will sell for a very significant amount. And it might might make sense to actually sell some of these because we have, well, we have a massive speed bonus thanks to huge amounts of horses. But I think I should be able to gain those back at a later point. So I think I'm actually going to be selling this. Let's actually have a look. Yeah, we don't lose any speed whatsoever. And we're also gaining 7,300 from this, which is crazy. And I think I might want to sell the Azurai horses too, even though they're not going to be giving me that much. And we're still at 1.39. Okay, what about the Step War horses? Still at 1.39. What about these? Still at 1.39. I'm actually not entirely sure if it is going to change the speed <laughs> in real time. It might very well make, the, make, make sense on that. But um, let's see. We gained one skill point? Are you serious? We gained one skill point? Ah, oh, come on. That is actually hilarious. Okay, so we still have 1.39, so it does seem to change and indeed update in real time. So that's nice to know at least. Ah, some Sea Raiders. Perfect. I will be doing battle with you, sirs. Thank you. That is very nice indeed. Oh yeah, and I also did need to sell my iron ore at Epicrotia, but unfortunately it is... Not going to sell for very much. I'm actually um, very sure that, that the, the reason for that is because there are two iron ore villages very close by. But I thought that maybe if I purchased a whole bunch of the iron ore from the villages, then maybe there would be a bit of a shortage. Hurunak of Kara Karahan was lost. Okay, that might be a bit problematic for the Kuzait, if that is indeed the same Hurunag that we know and indeed maybe love or hate, dependent on your situation. But anyway, there we go. Take out another one of those. Sturgia peasants, I won't be taking them, but I will be taking the prisoners. Thank you very much. I think I'm going to buy all of it, actually, and then we will be heading on to somewhere else. But I'm going to sell all of my armor here. So I'm going to gain 3,200 from that. We're going to gain a little bit more from my ranged weapons as well. And then we have a whole bunch of stuff that we can indeed smelt. We could also ransom prisoners. Oh yeah, this might actually make sense. Okay, I'm going to ransom her. 
There we go. Basically, what I'm trying to do is maintain the health rating of the Sturgeons as much as I possibly can. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, but anyway, if we if we see anyone that's in trouble, we're going to try to ransom them as soon as we possibly can. And this is actually really fun. Now, I used to have diplomacy fixes installed. I don't have that installed any further. So now we're seeing the base game's diplomacy features, which weren't pro weren't previously available. So this is cool. This is very cool indeed. So let's make peace. We're going to be gaining a pretty significant amount of tribute, as you can see. We, we receive 2,300 tribute daily, which is not that much in comparison to, I mean, if you think about it, two factions, one of them giving them just 2,300. But it is better than what we gained with diplomacy fixes, that's for sure. So there you go. That is wonderful. And... Look at this. Everyone has been now been freed thanks to the peace agreement too. So that makes even more sense because being able to free all of those vassals and increase our combat strength as a result is definitely worth it, even if the money per day is not. Anyway, let's see what this guy has. Army of poachers. We might want to do this just purely for the relation gain actually thinking about joining Vilda's army and seeing where he decides to go. If he's going to run into a massive Batanian army of 900 units or something like that, then I will probably say farewell to him. But, uh, oh, I, I noticed actually that his cohesion is pretty bad at the moment. Oh dear, yes. Huge Sturgeon army just being defeated by a number of Batanians. He wants to besiege this castle, which is completely understandable there's only 106 defenders in here technically oh oh everyone ran off okay well everyone ran off i think that caladog would be a perfect target for us thank you very much <laughs> oh my is he is he really making this mistake I think he is. Look at him. He's running away like the dog that he is because he's Caladog. You get it? Uh, yeah, I made that jo I made that joke. Okay, great. Uh, I'll let myself out. Yes, I will indeed. You know, I'm actually really hoping that I'll be able to level up my athletics relatively fast. Uh, but unfortunately, it doesn't seem like that's the case. My athletics is really taking a very long time to level up. And as I've said before, I have the, uh, the mod that basically makes it so that any time you're leveling a skill before 90 skill points, it takes quite a significant amount more time to level up before that, uh, before that point. And then once you get past 90, then it starts to increase as a result of your proficiency in that. Because it makes logical sense to think, you know, when you're a beginner, you're probably not going to be that good at using this particular skill, whatever it may be. You know, whether that's a real life skill or whether that is an in-game skill. You know what I mean? So it's just basically a, a case of practice makes perfect. And in my case, practice makes, well, imperfect, <laughs> I guess. Oh, uh, yes. I, I, you know, you can, you can quite clearly tell that I definitely make a lot of mistakes. But, well, I, I aim to have fun. That's the point. I aim to have fun as much as I possibly can. Anyway, oh, we're up against Batanian Fian champions. Are you serious? Okay, you know what? I'm actually going to tell my infantry just to charge in. We cannot hold back in regards to these Batanian Fian champions. They're going to be so incredibly damaging to us. We need to charge in straight away. If we end up losing this, this is going to be a, a mighty blow for Sturgia. Because even though I don't really count myself as being a very strong vassal at the moment, it is definitely going to set us back pretty heavily and it's going to be something that I definitely do not want at this point. I don't really mind getting taken prisoner in general because you know I realize that the grand scheme of what we're trying to do is greater than me just getting taken prisoner for two minutes but um, you know you've got to think about the long game rather than what is currently happening now you know it's kind of like chess or something like that you have to think a little bit ahead of what you're going to do and what you're planning on doing and stuff like that obviously you don't have to you know that is completely completely personal choice and everything but otherwise we were able to take him and defeat him indeed so i'm actually going to be taking him prisoner i know i don't usually do this but i will be taking him prisoner i will be rescuing those uh, those prisoners, I will be taking some of him, some of his army uh, prisoner as well. So let's see if I can, where am I right now? Okay, so Omor is actually the closest town to me. I am very pleased that I was able to get Mr. Caladog 
Taken prisoner. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, perfection. Okay, hello there. I will be helping your army. Oh, will I? We do have a significant numbers advantage in this battle, but... Oh, I, it's it's not it's not really making that much difference because we've played as Britannia. We know exactly what their strengths are and what their weaknesses are indeed. If you can get into their archery line and fluster their Britannian Fian champions, that's all you need to really concentrate on. You just need to make sure that those guys are confused, shocked, and, well, running away for their lives. That's pretty much it. Um, unfortunately, if they are allowed to fire for an extended period of time, then a defeat is sure to follow. So hopefully we'll be okay here. Unfortunately, oh, no, no, never mind. I actually thought they had a hundred and, uh, actually, I, th I thought they had 80 archers, but I was misreading it. And apparently they only have 10 and they have 84 spearmen instead which is perfectly fine. <laughs> that should be okay. So I think what we're actually going to do here, I'm literally going to tell my people to charge in. I'm going to tell my own forces to charge in. And if the AI that is allying itself with us does the same thing, then I will indeed welcome them. But if they don't, then that's their choice. So that's their choice. And hopefully, oh, nice. Let's get some damage. Oh, nice. Take out that Batanian scout. And uh, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to do some more with my two-handed sword. I very much enjoy using it. All of these mounted units, they're very slippery indeed, and uh, my weapon is not particularly fast, so it does make things a little bit harder to actually get some hits in. Oh, it does so much damage. It does so much damage. I love it. Yes, I absolutely love it. And this isn't even the best one. <laughs> this isn't even the best one that I could make. I mean, generally, okay, yeah, you could definitely make something that is faster or longer or hits harder or whatever. But this sword actually seems to suit us quite nicely because it is pretty long. It has a decent swing speed. It's not going to win any duels, that's for sure. So maybe I'm thinking that what we'll do is for my one-handed weapon, I might actually decide to go for kind of like a dueling sword. So something that is a little bit less reach, but a little bit more speed. I think that would probably make the most sense. But anyway, we're actually getting some relation increases right here. Oh yeah, by the way, I did install a mod for this particular playthrough that is called true noble relations or something along those lines and then basically what that does is that whenever you help a specific vassal it doesn't increase your relation with that clan as a whole it actually just increases the relation with that specific vassal so it is going to give you a much more personalized experience in regards to interacting with the game world and its characters. So generally that, that's what I was trying to do and hopefully it's going to work out quite nicely. Although I think it is making the game that much harder because obviously if you can increase your uh, reputation with Sega's clan, for example, because her clan is Kuloving and you can see here that, well, none of the others have had their relation increased with me at all and uh, that would have probably helped me out quite a bit more but obviously as it stands we are going to be a sturgeon loyalist we're very much going to be staying with them for the remainder of this series and you know come what may we will stick with them and uh, we'll see how it goes otherwise let's see if i can sell some stuff here oh that's actually a really nice shield to sell okay i like it Hilariously enough, I'm literally going to be lugging around a huge amount of iron ore the entire time, aren't I? Yes, that's probably going to happen. Anyway, that is going to be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, then by all means, hit the like button. And, um, well, if you didn't, you know what to do. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.